If you watch Pokemon content on the internet, then you probably know that Nuzlocking makes up a large portion of the Pokemon community. With Nuzlockers spending weeks, if not months, meticulously planning fights, encounters, and any other means necessary to achieve victory. When you attempt a Nuzlocke, the idea is to take your time. But now, what if we take a look at another side of the community? Speedrunning. Runners will go through hundreds of attempts, throwing themselves at the game and never stopping to plan. They just pray that luck will be on their side so they can get through the game in the shortest time possible. One night, I thought to myself, what if I combine the two? Now, I consider myself to be pretty good at Nuzlocks. I've been doing them for a few years now. The only problem is... I've never speedrun a game before. On the bright side, I know a lot about Pokemon Platinum. I've played the game ever since I was a young child, and I've probably nuzlocked that game alone at least 10 times. With that much game knowledge, I sat down and made a rough plan for a route that I could take to nuzlock this game as quickly as possible. But before I can start, I need to lay down a few ground rules. All standard hardcore nuzlocke rules are in effect. If a Pokemon faints, it's considered dead. I am only allowed to obtain the first Pokemon in each named location. I am not allowed to use items in battle, held items are fine. I must remain in set battle style the entire run, and I cannot overlevel the next gym leader's highest level Pokemon. I also must nickname everything. The optimal speedrun strat is to nickname everything a single letter so the game can print their names out faster, but with a Nuzlocke, what's the fun in that? Now, for the rules that are specific for this challenge. First off, no speed up is allowed in this run. The entire game must be ran at normal game speed. Also, unlimited rare candies are allowed. This run is more to see how quickly I can progress through the game, not to see how long I can spend grinding on wild Pokemon, which would be awful without any speed up. Some other things might not follow standard speedrun conventions, like me allowing myself to pause the timer and take short breaks when needed, because let's be honest, this run is going to be pretty long. But this is all just meant to be a fun little challenge and not a speedrun I'm going to put on any leaderboard, so don't take it too seriously. With these ground rules laid, I set up my timer and booted the game up. This is my attempt at speedrunning a hardcore Nuzlocke. We start off our journey by naming myself Adam and our rival Kevin. The second that we're able to move, we race to the options menu to make two very important changes on top of changing the set battle style. First thing we do is change the tech speed to fast. A good chunk of this run is spamming the A button through text boxes, and the sooner we can get through those, the better. The second big change is turning off battle animations. These animations may be short on their own, but by getting rid of them altogether, those small time saves will add up fast. About 5 minutes in, we're able to choose our starter. And as much as I love Turtwig with it being my first Pokemon ever, I have to admit that Chimchar is objectively the best choice here. Infernape is just so fast and so powerful, it's just what we need for a speedrun. We defeat Kevin and eventually end up in Sand Gem Town, where we name our chimp Monk E. After about 14 minutes, we finish the catching tutorial, obtain Pokeballs, and can finally start catching Pokemon. That's fair. Oh, you actually- No, it is an encounter! No, that's so bad! The reason we didn't want our Route 202 encounter right away is because we wanted to get our encounter at Lake Verity first. Getting either Starly or Bidoof from the lake increases our odds of getting Shinx on 202, who is extremely important to grab as an electric type, along with the potential of it getting the Intimidate ability. But instead, we get Oof the Bidoof, and back at Lake Verity, we snag Mav the Starly. After that, we defeat a few beginner trainers on our way to Jubilife, where we speed through Looker's lengthy monologue and rush over to the West Gate where we grab the Old Rod. From here, we head right outside to Route 218 to grab Gary the Magikarp. In most Platinum Nuzlocks, I would travel back to Twinleaf Town and fish for Magikarp there, but I didn't want to waste time having to run back and forth from there. Not to mention that the Pokemon that we can get later on Route 218 will either already be on our team or not useful to us at all. Our next order of business is securing a good answer for Rourke. We have two, maybe three options. One would be to get Badoo on Route 204, whose absorbs will be able to beat Rourke mostly all on its own. A second option would be to get Psyduck in either Ravaged Path or Orberg Tunnel, which can use Water Gun to decimate the gym as well. We can also get him a chop on Route 207, who is still really useful but can't one-shot some of Rourke's mons like the others can. After finding a few duplicates on 204, we actually end up getting the Shinx that we missed out on, and name it Rick. So while we do miss on Badoo, we can't complain about this encounter. In Ravaged Path, we get Bruce the Zubat, and while it isn't a Psyduck, Zubat is an even more important Pokemon for the rest of the run, so getting this encounter out of the way now is not a problem. East of Jubilife, we fight Kevin and his two Pokemon, beating him in record time, and while avoiding the trainers on the route, we stumble across an Abra. I was originally going to skip my encounter on this route, but we may as well throw a ball at it, right? Well, it breaks out and teleports away, but in my haste, I had totally forgotten that Monk E had Taunt, which could have prevented it from teleporting away. While it is a slight slip up, I hadn't planned on using an Abra anyway. Anyway, but now it was just a matter of catching a small yellow duck in Orberg Gate. All right, please, Psyduck. Okay, good. That's, that's big. It's really big. We get our answer to Rourke, Huey the Psyduck, and now we can breathe. The second we get into Orberg City, we run over to Route 207, where we are lucky enough to get that Machop that we name LYZ. 
Then, in Orberg Tunnel, we capture Mr. Airy the Geodude, which we will happily take over Onyx for the time being. We verbally nudge Rourke out of his little retreat in the mines, and back at the Pokemon Center, we get our important party members to the level cap of 14. We make sure that we have Bidoof on our team as well, so that we can save a trip back to the PC later, since we needed to use Rock Smash to get us to Floroma Town right after the gym. Inside the gym, we weave around the two gym trainers and challenge Rourke for his badge before we can even formulate a thought. Nine minutes to beat Rourke? Give me like one minute. <laughs> Oh, Stealth Rocks. Okay, that, mm, it's okay. If Huey dies here, that's okay. Ideally, we don't want Huey to die, but it's okay if he does. Use Pursuit. Okay. Use Pursuit again. So yeah, if we switch, if we, switch we die, so just go for it. Potion. Lame. Oh, I think we just kill here, actually. Easy. Easy game. Huey, Huey sweeps. <laughs> In under an hour, we have our first badge, and now it's time to sprint towards our second. With the level cap at 22 now, I immediately evolve Gary into Gyarados, giving us another Mon with the Intimidate ability. We Rock Smash through Ravage Path and avoid every trainer on the way to Floroma Town. But before we can progress, we need to take care of Team Galactic at Valley Windworks. At the Windworks, we capture Chompers the Buizel, and the few required grunts we need to fight before Mars are easily taken care of by Mr. Airy. We then head back to the PC to evolve Rick into Luxio, and then we are ready for Mars. The only Pokemon you should ever need to beat her are Luxio, Gyarados, and maybe a Rock type if Gyarados can't defeat Perugly on its own. But here is probably the cleanest Mars fight you'll ever see. One down. Take out, expected, spite. Let's go, Gary. Okay, Citrus so Berry doesn't, Orin Berry doesn't matter, it just dies now. All right, Mars down, easy. Now that we can advance, we expertly avoid every trainer on Route 205 and enter a turn of forest, where alongside Cheryl, we take care of the few required fights amongst the trees. There is one double battle that can be a little tricky if you don't get rid of the Pachirisu before the Beautifly comes in, since together they have a move that can hit most of your Pokemon for super effective damage. The last set of trainers are two Psychics, who you can fight one-on-one, -on -one, but I opt to fight them together to save time. After that, we avoid the rest of the trainers and exit the forest, skipping our encounter completely. In a turn of city, we get our team to level 20 20 and head right into the gym. Mav takes care of the gym trainers, ensuring that Monk E and Bruce are healthy enough to take on Gardenia without needing an extra trip to the Pokemon Center to heal. Oh, I used Taunt? What am I doing? Oh, no. Okay, oh, it worked anyway. You tried to use Reflect. Actually, best case scenario. Did that kind of hurt? Use a potion. Yeah, use him. Nice, nice crit, big. Alright, uh, Gardenia has Roserade out, so we just Flame Wheel. Stun Spore, okay, Paralyze me, just hit through it, because we're, we're, we're him. Okay, so just Barry, just hit through it again. Magical Leaf. Alright, just hit through it. Nice, okay, Gardenia down, easy. About an hour and a half in, and we have our second badge. But before we head to our third, we have to deal with Team Galactic again. If you watched my video where I completed three Platinum Hardcore Nuzlocks at the same time, then you might know that I'm not the biggest fan of Jupiter's Gun Tank. Its heightened crit chance with Night Slash can spell disaster for any run if you're unlucky. Yet, we can't slow down, so we stumble up the stairs of the Galactic Building, avoiding all grunt battles, and come face to face with Jupiter. Outspeeds, please kill. Nice, good. Um, I don't even know what you have. I mean, you, I know you have Night Slash, but you have Smoke Screen, Screech, Poison Gas. Uh, we're just gonna Spark here. Screech, that's fine. Good. Go to Gyarados. Poison Gas. Nice Mist. Good. And we Dragon Rage. Okay, good. Heals a little bit. Crit kills me. Oh, it's so low. Okay. We're gonna go into Star Actually, we're gonna go into Monkey. Mock Punch. Does she have a potion? 
No. Okay, good. Easy. Okay. Easy, Jupiter. It was so difficult last time with all those crits, but really, this was this was easy. With Team Galactic out of our hair for now, we scoop up our brand new bicycle and make our way down the cycling road. Underneath the road lies a secret entrance to Wayward Cave, where we have a 20% chance of getting a Gibble, which is boosted to about 31% thanks to our Geodude and Zubat duplicates. We had tried to boost those odds to 57% by grabbing a Bronzor and Mount Cornet, but instead we found Medi Betty the Metatite. Inside Wayward Cave, Luck was not too kind to us, giving us Dwayne the Onyx. Gibble eludes us this time, but we'll find them eventually. While this video is about speedrunning, the video itself took a lot of time and effort to make. So if you want to see more content like this, feel free to leave a like, subscribe, or even check out my Twitch channel. Any amount of support would be greatly appreciated. The journey to Heart Home was not treacherous in the slightest. Just a few required trainers in our way, and we arrive at the home of our third badge. Inside Bebe's house, we pick up Yami the Eevee, who we aren't explicitly using right now, but we grab as a backup to evolve into any specific type we need in case an important Mon goes down. As far as the gym goes, Fantina is a problem, and maybe one of the only gym leaders I don't really have a consistent plan for. There is just so much RNG with Confuse Rays and Hypnosises that you kinda have to just, for a lack of better term, ball out. I take a little more time than I would like planning for the fierce and fabulous Fantina, and run through the darkness faster than you run up the stairs when you turn the lights off at night. But back in the light, the only thing scarier than the dark is Fantina and Hermes Maggie is staring back at me. All right, um, flame wheel. Please two shot. It doesn't even two shot. Oh no. Okay, well that's fine. Just like no damage to me. Please, that, please let that just be a low roll. Please two shot. Damn. Okay. Oh, gets the burn. Oh, it's gonna die after this. Okay, future sight. A little scary. I'm not gonna lie. How much is future sight gonna do to me? It's gonna do a lot actually. I'm gonna see if I can just get the kill here. Hold on. Hypnosis. If I fell asleep. Okay. Shadow Claw. Okay, I'm gonna take the future side attack. Please don't kill me. Okay, good. The switch. That did like. Oh, it's still typeless damage. Okay, interesting. I thought it was only typeless damage in Gen 3. Confused, right? I'm confused, really? Okay. Bite. Please hit through. Nice. This won't kill. Shadow Claw. Okay. Hit again. Okay. Don't crit. Break through. Damn it. Okay. Break through. Nah, that works. Okay, good. Gotta be a little risky here. We're doing a speed run. It's gonna see kill with a bunch of things here. Okay. Go Gary. Shadow ball, okay. Oh my god. But death fell. Shit. Okay, so we're gonna go into you. Shadow ball doesn't affect me. Good. Wing attack. Side beam. Holy damage. Take it on the chin. Okay, no confuse, good. Citrus berry, okay. Going to you. Side beam, okay. It's gonna use magical leaf now. I'm confused. Oh, I'm switching. I can't deal with confusion. Oh, I should have switched. Ah, that was stupid of me. I should have switched into the barrel again. The shadow ball's gonna hurt. Ooh, all right. Wait, what, what am I doing? I'm throwing right now. Magical leaf, that's okay. Good. Please just hit through. Wait, how much health does this thing have? I'm gonna bite. Shadow ball, okay. No crit. Please just hit. Kill. Yes, okay, no death. Let's go. Woo, okay. Oh my God, that was actually scary. That was so scary, but we did it. We finished Fantina split in just under 2 hours and 24 minutes, and now it is time for our first fight against Kevin since before the first gym. From this point on, pretty much every fight against Kevin will have the same formula. Since we picked Chimchar, he will have these 6 Pokemon by the end of the game, with the Staraptor line leading every time. From our end, most of these fights will look very similar with only slight variations in each of them based on the Pokemon we have available to us. However, Gyarados and Crobat are staples in each of these fights, and I highly recommend bringing them every time. For this fight specifically, Kevin only has 4 Pokemon, so we can afford to bring a few backups if needed. The We'll probably have the two hit because of his intimidate, but that's okay. But we have our own intimidate. It's double teaming. It's kind of annoying. We hit. Good. Oh, just doesn't kill. Okay. Endeavor. Yeah, I'm at the switch now. If I don't hit this. I missed. Of course I miss. Uh, quick attack coming. Good, hits, dead. Beautiful. Always have contingencies. 
Ponyta. Too easy for Graveler. A burn would be kind of weird, but, you know, we, we fight through burns. I think this still kills, even through Growl. Yep, nice. Earthquake's just too good. Monkey next. Good. Crimple up. Uh, Gyarados just takes care of this. This thing can't can't touch Gyarados. All right, buried down. Easy. With our roadblock removed, we head to Route 209 where we pick up Ralts, which my chat decides to name George W. After George Washington, because I was doing the speedrun on the 4th of July. In the Salacion Ruins, we grab all of the Evolution Stones there, as well as the HM for Defog, which we will use later. As far as Route 210 and 215 go, we decide to skip our encounters there to save some time, and the only thing blocking our path before we make it to Veilstone are two Ace Trainers. We could fight them together to save time, but they can be surprisingly difficult if you aren't careful, so I decide to fight them individually. Once we get through them, we finally arrive in Veilstone City, where we can challenge the gym for badge number 4. Inside the gym, George W is able to take care of most of the gym trainers all on his own, and then it's time to get into the ring with Maylene. Meditite. Ooh, actually the play would have been to go with the Golbat because of uh, inner focus, but we're gonna get faked out here. Oh, didn't fake out here. Why didn't it fake out? Will we kill? That's good. It's actually really good. Okay, Machoke comes in. We'll just uh, aerial ace again. This will two hit. Never mind. Okay, <laughs> let's go. Let's go. That's big. Lucario can't hurt Gyarados at all, so it just we just win. Are you sure about that? Intimidate, Drain Punch, Pathetic. So we just Dragon Rage a few times. Paralysis would be kind of lame. Ah, uh, do I Ice Fang here? She's gonna use a potion. I'm gonna Ice Fang here. Oh, nice crit. Okay. Okay, I showed Dragon Rage again. I missed. Okay, so it's not 100% free as I thought. If she crits her, that's really bad. Do I kill with um, Mach Punch? I might. Let's go into, oh, but Drain Punch would actually, she, he's, he's gonna Drain Punch, right? We're gonna go into Bruce. Damn, I knew I knew that paralysis was coming, okay. Confused, right? Good, gets off. Go into Monkey. Please hit yourself, that'd be so big. Okay, use Metal Claw. Bone Rush is gonna hurt. I needed to hit itself once. Damn, that's crazy. Oh! What? Oh, no! Fuck, man, it got all its health back. Now it hits itself. I needed that to happen earlier. Man, that's rough. Okay, so we lose Staravia. That's not great. It's not the end of the world, though. We do get a fourth badge. That was a throw on my part. I should have just gone into Gyarados again, even though a crit still would have killed me there. So actually, it would have been worse if we lost Gyarados, I'll be honest. Mav being the first death of this run because I was rushing definitely hurts. But we don't have time to mourn. We will honor his legacy by finishing this challenge. We helped Dawn out with some Team Galactic grunts causing her trouble and grabbed the HM for Fly. From here, we head through Route 214 and Valor Lakefront and skip our encounters there. We spent a few minutes in the Ruined Maniac Cave trying to get a Hippopotas until I realized that Hippopotas was a 5% encounter and I might not be getting it. But on Route 213, we do grab an encounter and get Cooper the Shellos. Before we can access the Pastoria Gym, we're jumped again by Kevin, and his fight goes exactly the same as it did back in Heart Home. But now it is time to start preparing for Crash Your Wake. On Route 212, we grab a Roselia that we named Badoo to ensure that we get either Pikachu or Pichu from the Trophy Garden. Ideally, we want Pikachu so we can evolve it right away into Raichu for Wake, and we just don't have time to boost Pichu's friendship so it can evolve into the former. Our gamble doesn't pay off, and in the Trophy Garden, we are given a Pichu that we named Lil Bolt. She may not be of use to us now, but don't worry, her time will come. I am still more than confident in our ability to get past Wake, so we speed through the gym trainers, and on pace for five badges in under four hours, it was time for our clash with Crash or Wake. So we use Spark, Waterfall, please don't crit, please don't flinch. Beautiful, okay, dead. That was like worst case scenario if that happened. Oh my God, he lived. Oh, he's gonna heal though. He withdrew, oh shit. 
Uh, that was not expected. Okay, that did a little bit more damage than I thought it would. But I still outspeed. I think I still kill. Okay, good. Get my health back. Okay, Floatzel comes in. Ice Fang crit just kills me, so we're gonna go into a YZ. Take the Ice Fang, please, just hope it doesn't freeze us. Good, and then we just revenge. Brine does a bit. We're not under half. This just kill? Okay, it doesn't kill. We're just gonna do it again. It doesn't kill us because we're not under half. Good, okay, floats will down, easy. Crit would have actually killed us there, but we take those. We have to get some luck here and there. And then it's just you. You're gonna heal. Yeah, you're gonna heal. Okay, so we go into Rick. He's gonna heal. I'm just gonna use my move again. Actually, crit kills me. Doesn't matter. Okay, please kill. Please actually kill here. That'd be so sick. Nice. Okay, wake down. Easy. Sub, sub four hour. Let's go. With a quintet of badges in hand, we exit the gym, and Team Galactic sets off a bomb in the Great Marsh. We track down and dispose of the grunt responsible, and then Cynthia shows up and gives us the secret potion, opening the path towards Celestic Town. To get there, we backtrack to Route 210 and enter the foggy area of the route. We use Defog to clear the air and go through the few required fights on the route, eventually arriving in Celestic Town. Team Galactic is causing another disturbance near the ruins, so after defeating the lone grunt guarding the entrance, we head inside, and here we're challenged by Galactic Boss Cyrus. At this point in the game, his team is very weak, and he goes down without a sweat. Upon saving the town, we get the HM for Surf, allowing us to traverse the water on Route 218 to arrive in Candelave City. We arrive at our new destination, and before we can even cross the bridge to the other side of the city, Kevin is itching to fight us once again, and this time, his Pokemon are fully evolved. So now we, we Spark Star Raptor, takedowns, okay. That does a decent amount of damage. We hit Spark. Might have to risk crit here. We're going Mr. Arrow, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine here. We can use Mr. Airy for both things, because a crit would have been really bad there. Take down, that's fine. I just gotta hit a rock throw. Don't miss. Great, okay, good. Star Raptor down. Empoleon comes in right away. Not amazing, but it's okay. Going to Gary. Bubble Beam, no damage, beautiful. Dragon Rage, we're gonna have to probably three hit. Four hit, might be three. If we're lucky, three. Three, beautiful. It's gonna be a three hit, sweet. That was the hardest Pokemon, but now it's down. Um, what the heck is this thing gonna do to me? Should I just, uh, I'm just gonna Aqua Tail here. It missed the takedown, perfect. Aqua Tail, this should just kill. Beautiful. Heracross is Rock Tomb. I'm gonna pivot. I'll use Night Slash. Okay, well, it's gonna use Brick Break now. So we go into you. Oh, use, why do you use Night Slash again? Okay, that, that crit, that's fine. I can go up for fly, and then fly hits. That should be dead. Okay, good. Aircross is dead. Uh, I'm gonna stay in against the uh, Rose Raid. We just fly again. Grass Whistle misses, and fly connects. I think this kills. It's gonna be close. Beautiful, okay, bury down. After Kevin's little refresher, we have access to Byron's gym, but we can also go to Iron Island. Going through the island alongside Riley will get you a Riolu egg, but we aren't going to waste the time to hatch it and then raise its friendship to evolve it into Lucario. We need to go there to get the HM for strength anyway, but there's actually another reason that we want to complete the island. The good thing is that there's only four trainers that we need to beat to make it to the exit. We take the boat over, spelunk down a few floors, and link up with Riley. From here, we fight the two required ace trainers individually, followed by the two required galactic grunts with Riley. Upon their defeat, we we decline Riley's egg and grab what we came here for. Right before you get to the exit, you can grab a metal coat as well as a shiny stone to evolve Onyx and Roselia respectively. Steelix is a great tank for later in the game, so while this little side quest may or may not have been worth the almost 10 minutes I spent on it, it does give us an easier path to victory. Now we fly back to Candelave and prepare for Byron. His team isn't inherently difficult, but his Bastiodon can throw a wrench in our plans if it uses Metal Burst, meaning that the best way to beat it would be to KO it before it can move. Thankfully, a close combat from Monk E is able to do that for us as long as Bastiodon doesn't use Iron Defense. If that happens, we may have to improvise a bit, but we aren't going to take the time to plan any longer. Let's get this badge. Byron's gym trainers take up quite a bit of time, but we ride the elevators and conveyors and make it to Rourke's father. Now, we show him that losing runs in the family. Mud Bomb, outspeeds. Okay, my Spadef fell. It's fine. This, this just kills. I'm not worried about my Spadef right now. Surf, please kill, please one-shot. There's like a pretty good chance it's one-shots. 
Good. Okay. It was a crit. Beautiful. Bastiodon. Okay. We go into Monkey. Please don't Iron Defense. Stone Edges. Good at miss, so close combat just kills. That's Byron. Easy. Thanks to Bastiodon not causing us any problems, we have six badges at around five hours in. Team Galactic sets off another bomb, this time at Lake Valor. So now it's time to deal with a few more Galactic Commanders. At the lake, we come across Commander Saturn, whose team poses no issue, with Bruce able to completely wall his Toxicroak, easily taking it down. Then we need to help Dawn out with Mars at Lake Verity. Mars's team is pretty much the same as Saturn's, except she uses her Perugly instead of a Toxicroak. I bring Gary in for an Intimidate and decide to attack before switching into Dwayne, but before I even bring Dwayne in, Gary lands a crit Aqua Tail, KOing Perugly and ending the fight. Our next destination is Lake Acuity, where Kevin was sent to deal with Jupiter. But before we get there, we need to get an important encounter at Fuego Ironworks. With our duplicates, we have a 50-50 chance of getting either Magnemite or Magmar, and we are praying that we get Magnemite. There we go, beautiful. With our new friend Proton, we rush to Mount Cornet to evolve it into a Magneton and then right into Magnezone. The strong defensive typing, along with great stats, make this a Mon to be reckoned with for the rest of the run. Now to get to Lake Acuity, we need to slog through routes 216, 217, as well as Acuity Lakefront. We opt to skip our encounters in all of these locations, as any of the ice types available aren't really game changing at this point in the run. Sneasel could be good, but you can't get a Razor Claw to evolve it until Victory Road. Deep in the snow, we pick up the HM for Rock Climb, and we need to use it to get up to Lake Acuity. Acuity. However, we can't actually use it outside of battle until we get the Snowpoint City Gym Badge. The main thing we need to plan for regarding Candice is her Frostlass. See, it has Snow Cloak as well as Double Team, factors that will increase its evasiveness and make it difficult for me to land attacks. Now, if only we had a Pokemon that resisted all of Frostlass's moves and had a super effective move that will always hit. Oh wait, we do. Our newly acquired Proton. Proton walls Frostlass and has Magnet Bomb, a 60 base power physical steel move that you normally would never run on Magnezone due to its lower physical attack, but this move never misses, meaning that Frostlass's attempts to raise its evasiveness will be futile. The only thing that could go wrong here is if it freezes us with Blizzard, so to mitigate our chances of that happening, I decided to bring a Pokemon that I can sacrifice in order to get Proton in for free and take one less potential Blizzard. The lucky winner of the Reaping will be Little Bolt their sacrifice will be a noble one. Inside the gym, we slide past all the trainers and march straight up to Candace to fight for badge number seven. Okay, we mock punch the Sneasel, Sneasel dies. Pillow Swine comes out right away. We just flamethrower, it dies. Good. Frost last comes out right away. Okay, that's fine. Sacking Pichu, as planned. Sorry, Pichu. Oh, a double team, that's cute. I'll Thunder Wave you. Ah, never mind, we're dead. <laughs> what does more damage? Does, uh, oh, it, it used double team, so we're just gonna Magnet Bomb. Nice double team, loser. Magnet Bomb always hits. You've been bamboozled. Oh, it has a Citrus Berry, it's fine. Keep double teaming. Keep doing it. Keep going! They don't get it! <gasps> nice crit! Let's go! What does the Obama Snow have? I think it has like Focus Blast. Oh, it does have Focus Blast. Okay. So we're gonna go into Gary. Lower its attack. That's fine. And then we're gonna go into Monkey. Wood Hammer. Okay, that's fine. That's free. And then Flamethrower ends it. Sweet. Sub six hour Candice. With seven badges in just under six hours, I'm feeling pretty good about our pace. But now we're entering the longest stretch in between badges, as we need to finish the entire Team Galactic storyline first. Kevin couldn't stop Jupiter from capturing Yuxi at Lake Acuity, and now Team Galactic has control of all three Lake Guardians. In order to free them, we travel to their headquarters in Veilstone, battle through waves of grunts, and confront Cyrus. He may have a Crobat and Honchcrow now, but their coverage means that Steel types can wall them. So we use Dwayne to counter Crobat and Proton to clean up his Honchcrow. We then receive the Master Ball from him and head further into the HQ to free the Guardians. Saturn is there as a last resort, but his team is weaker than Cyrus's, so just like at Lake Valor, he stands no chance. We free the Guardians, but not before Team Galactic can complete the Red Chain in order to control Dialga and Palkia. They're on their way to Spear Pillar, and we scale Mount Cornet to meet them. The two big fights remaining in the split are the Mars and Jupiter tag battle, as well as the 
final fight against Cyrus. In most runs, I would build separate teams for each battle, but it takes such a long time to go up and down Mount Cornet to access a PC that I decide to build a team that can deal with both fights simultaneously in order to save a few minutes. So we throw together a squad and rush headfirst to Spear Pillar. The Mars and Jupiter tag battle can be pretty difficult at times, not because we're fighting two commanders at once, but because Kevin is our partner. Kevin always leads with a Munchlax, who likes to do pretty much anything besides attacking with Body Slam. The rest of Kevin's team can make an impact, but the fight is essentially a 2v1 while Munchlax is on the field. So the sooner we can get it out of the way, the better. But at first, all we can do is stay alive and pray that Kevin cooperates. So we got the right side. We gotta take out the bronzer on the right side, because we don't want it setting up for uh, light screen. Okay, this guy, this one's down. The thing uses extra sensory, it's actually really good. Okay, use Reflect, that's good. Stockpile, it's fine. We Flamethrower this one now. This one's down. Munchlax is not helping. Air Cutter, that's fine. Oh, goes right for Skun Tank. Huh, why? Why would you do that? Gotta go Gary, right, I guess? We gotta get this thing off the field. Okay, Intimidate it. Poison jab, okay. Okay, not poisoned, okay, good. Aqua tail. Poison fang, oh no. Please, Munchlax, I'm begging you. Oh my god, did no damage. Accuracy fell, okay, that's fine. I need Munchlax to help me out here. Oh, it was a crit. Oh my god, if, I, if he attacks me, I'm dead. Oh, I actually lose Gary here. Citrus berry, fuck. Munchlax, please help me out. I think I just die. Oh! Okay, we're switching. Holy shit. Oh, because he has Reflect up. I was wondering why he did so much damage. This thing has Giga Drain, right? Oh, this one doesn't have Giga Drain. Okay, we can work with this. Going to Mr. Airy. Okay. Bite. No damage. Poison jab. No damage. Good. I'm poisoned. That's okay. Swallow. You're not helping me, dude. Okay, I need to get an Earthquake off. Get this thing off the field. Munchlax is confused. Okay, I think I get the Earthquake off. That's a crit. Okay, please just die to Earthquake. Good, dead, perfect. Okay, that's okay, we're good, we're good. We have a win condition here. I need to get this, yeah, Munchlax, if you can die, that'd be so sick. So we're gonna go into Proton and we're gonna discharge and hopefully kill both the Golbats and Munchlax in the process. Swallow, why, why, why would you do that? Stop doing that. Uh, we'll discharge everyone. Poison Fang, okay. I'm expecting a Confuse Ray. Sludge Bomb, okay, kill, yeah, kill the Munchlax. Kill it! Everyone die! Everyone die, please! I don't know if all the gold bats are gonna die, though. Yeah, they don't. That's okay, that's okay. It'll give, it'll give another turn for Munch, for Barry to get someone in and do some stuff. Even though I don't actually want to discharge again and kill Staraptor, because that's probably coming in next. Yeah. I'll, you know, I'll flash cannon, and I'll Staraptor kill the other one. So we'll flash cannon this one. Okay, he kills that one. He kills the one I didn't want him to kill, actually. That's okay. Confused our raptor. Okay, this one dies. I think we could just stay in here. Okay, we're free. That was really scary, almost losing Gyarados. Nice crit. Okay. Tag team down. With the last of the commanders down, we are given a lengthy lore dump. Long story short, Cyrus made the Pokemon equivalent of Satan very angry, and we need to prevent it from destroying our entire world. Cool stuff. Alongside Cynthia, we enter the distortion world, navigate the mass of floating islands, and then it is time for the final bout for Cyrus before we can get to Garatina. He keeps talking about his ideologies, but I'm kind of in a time crunch, so I don't have time to yap. A decisive battle against what is by far the strongest team we've come up against thus far will have to do. Close combat, the Houndoom, die. I don't know what's coming out next. I actually have no idea. Probably Gyarados, okay. This is probably gonna be Waterfall. You going to Gary? Oh, use Earthquake, that's actually best case scenario. Uh, we going to Proton now. Pray that it uses Giga Impact. That'd be, that'd be the best thing you could possibly do. Ice Fang, that's fine. So now we go back into Gary, Earthquake, back into Proton, go back into Gary. We're gonna, we're gonna get Gyarados on a minus six, and then we're gonna drag a dance up. We're gonna drag and dance, I think, twice. Now we Ice Fang. This should do about half. Okay, I'm gonna drag and dance one more time just to be safe. Get a little greedy. 
Hit the Ice Fang. Good. Okay. Gyarados down. Honchkrow, I'm going to stay in and kill this thing. Just don't miss. Just hit this. Make it easy. Thank you. I think this just kills. Plus three Ice Fang. Good. Okay. That was honestly one of the harder mons. Honchkrow's down. Good. Weavile coming out. Ice Punch, I think, can kill me. So we're just going to stick with our plan and go into Monkey. Fake out. Okay. Now we Mock Punch. If this crits, it kills. Not quite. I right, Barry, that's fine. It'll probably heal next turn anyway. Ice Punch. Aspen Barry in case of freeze. Good. No freeze. No heal. Good. Okay. We're good. Should be A-OK -okay from now. Crobat. Go to Proton. All it could use to hurt us is Air Slash. Which does no damage. Perfect. And then we just discharge. He'll confuse. Oh, he's doing for Air Slash. No flinch. Good. Discharge. I don't think I don't think it kills. Actually, it might. There's a chance it does. Not quite. Okay. Paralyzed. Now we have speed and kill. Beautiful. Okay. So we just win unless he heals. Full restore. Okay. That's fine. We have this in the bag. Hit the para again, please. That'd be, that'd be sick. Oh, okay. Just hit the range. That works. Okay. Cyrus down. It's time to get ourselves a Giratina now. With Cyrus defeated, we can face Giratina, who we immediately use our Master Ball on, and Lucifer is officially added to our team. With the world saved, we are free to leave the Distortion World and can make our way to our final badge. The last gym resides in Sunny Shore City, with Volkner as its leader. The good thing about this being an electric gym is that we've acquired a bevy of ground types, as well as other Pokemon that can resist electric type attacks. So we take care of his gym trainers and solve his gym puzzle, until it's time to overcome our last hurdle before heading to the Pokemon League. Oh, I didn't even- I didn't level everyone up. Eh, it's fine. doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Nice crit. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna beat his ass to show him how sick battling is. Yeah, battling's so sick. You just got your, your butt kicked. Okay, you're gonna heal. That's so fine. Raichu is Focus Blast. Not a fan. So we go Lucifer. We'll Dragon Claw, see how much it does. Special attack rose, it's okay. Got this half, perfect. Oh, I'm paralyzed, awesome, okay. Just hit through once. Okay. Perfect, okay, it's dead. Okay, Luxray, it's gonna use Crunch. Like how much is, Crunch does not do that much to me. Crunch really does not do a lot to me. I'm gonna Dragon Claw here. Good. This will do a lot. Oh, I actually did not do a lot. All right. Um, so we're going to go into Cooper now. Sick crit, dude. Okay. Switching. Not great. Not great. Not going to lie. Beat around the bush. Not, not great. Okay. No. Okay. Burn is big. That's big. Nice burn. Don't paralyze me. Good. Okay. It's dead. Perfect. Big burn. Okay, Electivire, I'm anticipating a Thunder Punch to my dome piece. So we're going to you. Perfect. And Earthquake. Fire Punch. Burn would be kind of weird. Perfect. I don't think this kills, though. It might. I mean, there's a chance it could. I don't think it does, though. Oh, it does. Perfect. Okay. Eight badges down. Easy. Love to see it. And just like that, we have our eighth and final badge. And now it's time to head towards Victory Road. We received the HM for Waterfall from Jasmine, who's taking a little vacation from the Johto region, and use it to scale the waterfall to the cave's entrance. Remember how we missed out on that Gibble all the way back in Wayward Cave? Well, with all of the Pokemon we've caught so far, we are guaranteed a Gabite encounter on a certain floor. The only problem is that we have a 5% chance to encounter it, so we may be here a while until we end up finding- or we find it after two tries. Sweet. After multiple Ultra Balls, Gibby the Gabite finally decides to stay in one, and we've officially captured the final Pokemon of this run. Now we can fight the remaining trainers to get through Victory Road. Some of them have pretty strong Pokemon, but we're able to make it out unscathed, eventually arriving at the Pokemon League. But we aren't home free yet. We still have to face off against Kevin one final time before we can challenge the Elite Four. This is officially his last chance to make an impact on this run, and even his stupid Munchlax has evolved. But we are so close to the end that we aren't going to let him stop us now. AP. AP go burp. Bird vs. Satan goes insane. 
It's probably lax. Oh, right for Empoleon. Okay, it's gonna Ice Beam, right? Oh, it's gonna Shadow Claw. That's even better for us. Say inverse, other bird, yes. Flightless bird. Hopefully this kills. That'd be so sick if it did. All right, does not. It'll waste a potion though. That felt like a crit, it was not. So that was a lot scarier. <laughs> oh, Torrent, you're so right. I always forget about Torrent. Um, so we going to you. Watch the burn. As expected, okay. That actually wasn't expected. It's actually pretty bad for us. Sunny day, ah, uh, not great. Okay, we might have to pivot our strategy here. I'm not gonna lie. Go back into Lucifer. Okay, he missed. That's big. Will o Wisp. Okay, I'm burned now. Not great. Oh, I should have ancient power. What am I doing? I'm throwing. Okay, I'm kind of throwing right now. Heal, please. With Drew. Okay. Snorlax. Okay, he's going to use Crunch now. Crunch, okay. Critical hit. Okay, and it lowered my defense. Okay, so we're just free balling this now. Please no crit. Okay, thank God. Dead. That could have been bad. Crit defense drop into crit. Probably bounce. Sunny day. Ah, oh, that's so fine. Okay, great. Okay, it's just dead. Good. And we just flamethrower again, and we win. Okay, bury down. About eight hours and 40 minutes in, and we had made it all the way to the Elite Four. Now it is time to start planning. I decided to look back at my three Nuzlocke's one controller run to see what Pokemon and strategies I used. My thinking is that if I use the team to beat three Elite Four simultaneously, then I should be able to take care of one. With one or two very small tweaks, we had our team, and it was time to bring this challenge to a close. The first Elite Four member, Aaron, is a total pushover as per usual. For a bug type specialist, his team is honestly pretty solid, but he's so underleveled compared to the rest of the league that it's kind of difficult to have trouble with him if you know what you're doing, and we take him at a breakneck pace. Next up on the menu is the ground type trainer Bertha, and her fight is incredibly simple. Lead with Gary, Dragon Dance twice while Wizcash barely touches us, and sweep the entire team with Waterfall. It's a good thing that this fight was so brain numbingly easy, because I got a massive raid from Pichow and kinda lost my mind. Even with the influx of over a thousand people joining the stream, I kept my cool, clicked waterfall five times, and crushed Bertha. Third is the firecracker himself, Flint. And what if I told you that this fight was actually easier than the last one? With Gibby on our side, along with the fact that it has a hasty nature, we can outspeed and torch Flint's entire team with Earthquake. The ever so complex plan goes off without a hitch, and we only have two more battles remaining. Lucian is the final member of the Elite Four, and him using Psychic types is very fitting, because he is the first one that actually requires us to use any brain cells. A few untimely crits here can spell disaster for us, but we need to trust our instincts and take that last step before we fight the champion. All right, Mr. Mime, here we go. I actually don't remember how this goes. I think Espeon comes out next. Do I outspeed the Espeon? What level's the Espeon? It's 55. If I, if I, I might just kill it, honestly. Uh, I outspeed it. Does it kill me as Psychic? I might just, I might just attack this thing. I'm just gonna go for it. Okay, Espeon down, that helps. Sweet, I think that was a range. Okay, Bronzong comes out. Bronzong, uh, scary. I'm just gonna crunch. I'm just gonna go for crunches. Okay, that's good damage. Combine, that's fine. We're okay, we're okay. I think maybe a Psychic crit's bad here, but we're fine. Psychic, come on, don't die. Good, okay. Never mind, that's actually so fine. I think now we die to it. No, we don't die to a crit. Oh, wait. No, we don't. We're good, we're good. We're fine. It dies, it dies after this. Unless he uses another potion, which would be really lame. That's a crit? Not a crit. Okay. Okay. Bronzong down, we should be fine now. Alakazam, anything is gonna kill me here. Going to Giratina. That's a crit. Okay. We're gonna have to another way, find another way to deal with the Gallade. Yeah, I think we're fine actually. With that Citrus Berry, I think we're okay. Was that Psycho Cut its best move against me? Yeah, we just win. Stone Edge missed. Ah, skill issue, I guess. Okay, Lucian down. That went a lot smoother than expected. 
but even still, we have the final fight ahead of us. Cynthia is infamous across the community for being extremely challenging, and there are a lot of things that can go wrong for us here. The good thing about this being the final fight is that we can freely sacrifice any Pokemon to get clean switches and regain tempo. Nine and a half hours, and we had traveled all the way from Twinleaf Town to the Pokemon League. The only thing standing between us and victory is six Pokemon belonging to one champion. The finale of it all begins now. Okay, Spiritomb, can't really touch my Magnezone, thank god. We discharge. The thing is, we are careful in nature, so we don't do a lot of damage. Actually, that did half. Maybe? Maybe we two hit? I doubt it, though. I don't think we do. Yeah, she's gonna heal. Oh, Paralyzed? That's big. Shadow Ball? Eh, that's okay. Oh, that's a crit. Nice, love that. Uh, so we're kind of fucked now, is what I'm hearing. It's, like, really bad. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. It's really bad. Oh, another para? Okay. Zap, hit the, hit the zap cannon. Oh, no, she withdrew. To what? Garchomp? Oh, damn. Huh. Okay. So here's how we're dealing with Garchomp. Um, she's going to Earthquake. Could Flamethrower. Probably going to Earthquake. So we're going to go into Gyarados. Play, pray she earthqua Earthquakes, and I have to dodge a flinch and a crit. Okay, good. Um, we need to get off one Dragon Dance. <gasps> she missed. Okay, we're so back. We're so back. We're so fine. That's actually the best thing that could ever happen to us. Ice Fang kills. Oh my god. Okay, that's so big. She threw. Actually, I never counted this killed. Okay, it does. Thank god. <laughs> I know it's four times, but still. Um, do we... I think we need to let Gyarados go down with... Uh, take the Ice Fang. Go for it. You're gonna die to Shockwave, but get some damage off. This is fantastic damage. We need this. Shockwave. Maybe you live? I doubt it. I doubt... Oh my god, that's huge. Okay, kill. Perfect. This is actually really good. Okay, I think this is where he goes down, sadly. Uh, we're just gonna... Ooh, we're just gonna waterfall here. He has to go down. I have to sack him. Yeah, he's speeding. That's fine. Thank you, Gary. Going to Gibby. This makes this fight a lot easier. Uh, we just Earthquake. Dead. Good. This is, this is gonna bring in my Lodic. Um, Gibby's just gonna... I'm gonna have to sack Gibby here. There's a chance, there's a very small chance uh, Milotic doesn't kill Gibby. Oh, we actually live all rolls that aren't crit. So, uh, Earthquake. And we outspeed. Just don't crit or freeze and we actually kill Milotic. I guess he's him? I guess he's him. I guess he's just him, guys. The tomb, uh, okay. Yeah. Earthquake. I think, wait, do we just win? There's no way. Is this kill? Oh, I'm, oh, I, oh my god, wait. Okay, it was pressure, so I lost my last earthquake. So, Gibby, if you want to live, hit the dragon rush. Is this, this kill? Is this kill? Let's go! <laughs> Sub 10 hour Nuzlocke. We win and spam the A button through what feels like hundreds of lines of dialogue until we are finally entered into the Hall of Fame, finishing the run just a hair under nine hours and 37 minutes. This challenge was some of the most fun I've ever had playing a Pokemon game. The entire stream was by far the longest I've done in what feels like forever, so it was a test of endurance for sure. But everyone in chat did an amazing job keeping me engaged and kept the energy up the entire time. I didn't come into this run with a concrete plan in mind, and knowing what I know now, such as what encounters, items, and trainers I need to spend time on, I'm confident that I could shave off a substantial amount of time if I were to attempt this again. I hope other people try this kind of run too, and not just Platinum, but other games as well. I think bringing variety to Nuzlocking and including aspects from other parts of the community is a great way to keep the entire thing alive and healthy. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and consider subscribing. I love doing these types of challenge runs, and I do my best to make sure that I put out content that people can enjoy. If you want to watch me do these live, check out my Twitch channel over at twitch.tv adamant. I hope everyone has a good day, and thank you all for watching.